I was waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, welcome to today's episode of Juicing the Numbers, your statistics in sports podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Tracy. And I'm Corbin Miller. And uh, today it is Saturday, January 11th at 3 p.m., so the NFL games have not yet started. We're not talking about them today. I know that you know what already happened. I know that when I listen to this on Monday, I already know what happened, but as of right now, we don't know what happened, so there's no way for us to talk about it. So, since that's pretty much the only thing of interest happening in the world of football outside of coaching changes we have already discussed, we will be turning our attention towards baseball. Baseball. Uh, This past Friday was the arbitration deadline. So, if you are unfamiliar with the world of baseball or the manner in which they conduct their contracts, basically after, I believe, I forget if it's three three years of service time, you become an arbitration eligible player. Basically, what that means is you are still technically in your rookie deal, but you get the fun experience of arguing with your employer about why you should be paid significantly more, and your employer gets the chance to tell you why you shouldn't and if you settle then you will uh you know you get basically a one-year deal uh it's not a true one-year deal in that like once it expires you're gone you're still under team contract you have uh several more arbitration eligible seasons but for all intents and purposes think of it as a one-year deal and if you don't settle then you get to go to an arbiter and that arbiter hears cases from both sides and then decides who's right or at least who's more correct and then issues out what the contract will be. So Friday was the deadline for that to happen and 155 (laughs) arbitration eligible players had to have a decision reached as to what was happening with their 2020 season. And we're going to talk about a few of them. Sound good to you? Sounds great. All right. So two records were set. I know that Uh, Mm -hmm. one of which was and we'll talk about each of them i suppose uh let's start with mookie bets mookie bets set the arb record with 27 million dollars for one year uh the record was set previously just last season by nolan arenado ahead of him signing a monster contract uh at one year 26 million dollars so mookie has avoided arbitration and set a record and it's tough to say if the Red Sox this feels weird like just from the Red Sox perspective because like everything out of Boston is we need to shed payroll and this seems strategic and Mookie is talks a lot about how he wants to hit free agency and so this seems like it would have been the perfect instance for them to actually go to arbitration to try to get this to be anything lower than what it was You know, even if it's just a few million dollars, like they don't really lose out on anything because they don't have to worry about hurting Mookie's feelings because he's he's not he doesn't care to stay and they're worried about payroll. So they will obviously want to make this as cheap as possible. And if you want it to be cheap and you don't care about someone's feelings, go to arbitration. Um, At least that's what I'm thinking in my mind would be make sense. But they decided to do this, which is by far better for Mookie Betts, but still kind of weird. Yeah, like my only thoughts towards that is if they were going to try and go cheap and they tried to cheap out and just lowball them uh, I think Moogie Betts would have a very strong case towards uh, these guys are trying to fuck me over with money arbitrator might just say "All right, well they're clearly just trying to be assholes I'm just going to side with Moogie Betts on this one because he deserves quite a bit of money so yes he does yeah, it's it's all it's also tough because you know in that time he has an MVP, so yeah, you know, <laughs> pretty strong leverage point there. That MVP. highest war season in you know the past many years, and that's actually one of the things we're, I'm going to get to. So uh, Mookie Betts's career thus far has been uh, stellar. Sounds like the right word. <laughs> so I ran a query in in Baseball Reference, and the highest WAR seasons by individual seasons by an outfielder you ready for this top 10 yes all right number one uh, it's just so unsurprising babe ruth uh 12.9 war it's just ridiculous (laughs) um number two i was not expecting 
It's Carl Yastrzemski. Um, huh? 12, 12.5. Listen to Carl Yastrzemski's season here. Okay. Uh, 326, 418, 622 slash line go for a 1040 OPS. Um, 44 home runs. All of these numbers led baseball, by the way. 44 home runs, 189 hits, 112 runs scored, 121 RBIs. Doesn't matter as much. Um, four triples. That didn't, these didn't lead baseball, but four triples, 31 doubles, uh, 91 walks. Just what a 11 of which were intentional. What a season. And only 69 strikeouts. Damn, that's nuts. That's a good season. You well, want to hear, that's you want obvious, to hear, but yeah. You want to hear Babe Ruth's 12.9 more season? I do. Offensively, it's just so much more impressive. It, it's ridiculous. Um, 378, 512, 846 slash line. Good for an OPS of 1359. Uh, he had that all led, everything led baseball except the batting average, which is bonkers. Um, he had 177 runs, which led baseball 59 home runs, 168 RBIs and 145 walks. All of those led baseball. This did not lead baseball 204 hits, 44 doubles, 16 triples, uh, and 81 strikeouts. It's just a fucking ludicrous season. That 1921. is fucking insane. Anyway, the third most sing war in a single season by an outfielder, uh, Babe Ruth, 11.9. Fourth uh, in his 1920, I should say, the year 1920. Uh, fourth most, Mickey Mantle, 11.3, 1957. Fifth most, Mickey Mantle, 11.3, 1956. Sixth most, Stan Musial, 11.1, in 1948. Seventh, Mookie Betts, 10.9, in, in 2018. Ted Williams, uh, 10.9, in 1946. Ty Cobb, 10.7, in 1911. And Number 10 is Willie Mays, 10.6 in 1954. Ain't that some shit? That is, by definition, some shit. That's a, a list of inner circle Hall of Famers and then Mookie Betts. Yeah. Who um, is, we don't know. Yeah, certainly, certainly on the Hall of Fame track. But uh, a lot of people at age 27, not a lot of people, but a decent handful of people are always on track at age 27 to make the hall of fame. <laughs> but like, yeah, yeah. Uh, for anyone wondering, Mike Trout, his peak war seasons were 10.5, which puts him at 14 and 15 on this list. So do you think this is any indication towards the Red Sox wanting to re-sign Mookie Betts to a longer deal? So wanting to resign him to a longer deal is still a tricky question because one, do they want that? And two, does he want that? Because if they did want to do that, they probably could have given him like uh, even like a three to four, ah, but he's too good to take a three to four year deal. He's not bad enough for that. They'd have to offer him at least eight. Right. Um, oh, it's so tough to say. It really is. I just don't know. They should. I'll start with that. They really should. Right. <laughs> um, they, and, and I, I hate that they would because he's very good and plays against my team and I don't want them to, but they so very much should. Um, as much as I do not like rooting for Mookie Betts or the Red Sox, he's a insanely talented player. Um, and that will bring me to the next query I ran. And I don't know where I put it. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, okay. I know what I did with this one. So this one's really similar to the last one. Uh, forgive me for that, but oh well. So I, if you notice from the last one, a lot of those names were old school baseball names, right? You know, you had your Babe Ruths, your yeah. Ty Cobbs, all yeah. that. So I, want, I wanted to look at it again uh, post-1960. So 1960 is in the integration year. I'm sorry, um, the expansion year. Integration has also already happened. So we're looking at a much more modern version of baseball. You could argue that baseball isn't at its true modernity until like somewhere in the mid 70s or 80s, but go fuck yourself. So if we look at it like that and look at who had the best single season wars uh, in the in the outfield in that time frame, the number one season is still Carl Yastrzemski's 12.5 uh, in 1967. Second most is then Mookie Betts 2018 season 10.9. Wow. 
three is Mike Trout's 2016 season, 10.5. Four is Mike Trout's 2012 season, 10.5. Five is Mike Trout's 2018 season, 10.2. Uh, six, Bryce Harper's 10 win season in 2015. Seven, Ricky Henderson's 9.9 win season in 1985. Eight, Mookie Betts' 9.7 win season in 2016. Ten, Ken Griffey Jr. at 9.7 in 1996. And Barry Bonds is number 10 with 9.7 in 1990. So now Mookie Betts is on this list twice. Only one fewer appearance than Mike fucking Trout, who's also number 11, by the way. And, you know, by all means, already has a Hall of Fame career. Yeah. Yeah, which will be um, very much so on display in the next query I ran. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is uh, this is going to turn into something where Mookie Betts, by all means, is going to ask for a Mike trout size deal. And oh, yeah, no I, way. He, uh, 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 no. Why not? Uh, all right, so first off, first off, Mike Trout got a contract worth 400 and something million dollars. Right. It, it's so comically, it's the most money for a contract by $90 million, I think. But what's it, stopping Mookie Betts from wanting to ask for that kind of deal if he can arguably because, say, hey, I am the next closest thing. Give me the next closest contract. He very well may be the next closest outfielder, uh, but he doesn't play the premium position Mike Trout plays, center field versus right field. And... He's the next closest, and he's still missing two entire MVP awards. And what arguably should have been at least one more from Mike Trout. So he may well be second, but the drop-off is colossal. Uh, I don't. Th I do think it is a major drop-off. I don't think it's colossal. I definitely think he could play center field. He has you know the speed and defensive ability to do it, but they have Jackie Bradley Jr., who is, you know, one of the best defenders in all of the outfield. Um, I really think that he's going to try now, you know, I fully believe that he can't ask for the exact contract Mike Trout got because you're right. He can't get that, but I think he's still going to try and ask for one at least close to that. Yeah. He will be roundly told to go fuck himself. Um, all right. So Mike, uh, Mike Trout's been in the league a little bit longer than Mookie Betts. So I'm going to only take his, um, uh, yeah, their, their rookie years were relatively equivalent in playing time, 52 games versus 40 games. So I'll include Mike Trout's 2011 season, which will be a little bit unfair to him, but what have you. So Mookie Betts has accumulated thus far in his career, 42 war, which is just wonderful. Truly is. Um, how much do you think Mike Trout's got? Oh man, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to say double, but uh, fifty percent more. I'm looking for it. Where did it go? Oh, hold on, I took a year off. My bad. Uh, fifty-four point one WAR. So that's twelve WAR better over that span. Career-wise. Mike Trout has 72.5 war, which is 30 and a half more war than Mookie Betts. That's a good amount. It's fucking comical. <laughs> um, it's literally an entire additional very good player's career. Up to this point. Mm -hmm. um, he's, I really, really believe in Mookie Betts. And believe he will be a phenomenal player for whatever team he's in. Uh, but he he'll he would probably be better situated around Bryce Harper money than he would Mike Trout money. I think that's I a think, much better yardstick. I think I still he'll probably think he would get a good amount more than Bryce Harper, though. I think he'll I think he would get more than Bryce Harper too. But I don't think it'd be by that much. Uh, yeah, honestly, I don't hate your decision to think that. I just think that he's so much better than Bryce Harper that why wouldn't he get a chunk more than he is? Because he's older. And that's a lame reason, but that's one of the main reasons Bryce Harper got that money 
because they were able to give him more years because he was younger. Even though he was only, I think, two years younger than Mookie Betts, um, he's still just younger, and those two years are make a difference. If you told me Mookie Betts was to eventually land upon a 10-year, $335 million <laughs> contract, I could say, okay, you know, he beats out Bryce Harper uh, for most money in, in uh, for a free agent contract by $14 million, which is huge. By the way, Bryce Harper only I'm beat Giancarlo Stanton. fucking mind. What? Uh, Bryce Harper is nine days younger than Mookie Betts. No way. What? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. When did they break into the league? Uh, 2012 for Bryce Harper, 2014 for Mookie Betts. Oh, that's why I'm thinking he's that much younger. <laughs> he came like, in two years, two years earlier. I was on Mookie Betts' baseball reference page, went to Bryce Harper's while like staring at the same spot for age, and I was like, something must be wrong because that's that's the same number. Oh, no, they are... You know, October 16th, 1992 for Bryce Harper, October 7th, 1992 for Mookie Betts. Wow, that's wild. Yeah. I can't tell if I'm overestimating how young Bryce Harper was or if I underestimated how old Mookie Betts was. It's definitely both. It's got to be. I definitely would not picture either of them being 27. Um, really, Bryce but, I mean, Bryce Harper breaking into the league when he was 19. You just forget how long he's been playing. Yeah, I I legit in my mind still pictured Bryce Harper as 24. He's going into his ninth season. Jesus, that makes me feel terrible. Yeah. Point honestly, standing, though. I, I think Bryce Harper is like the most overrated player in baseball. Uh, he... Mm. He He's is one of a those frustrating... guys. He can put he can put up the season that you always expect him to have, but he's done it only once in his nine or in his eight years, and I just don't know if he's ever going to be able to repeat that. No, and I think the fact that his own team didn't give him that contract should say a lot, mm-hmm. uh, because they certainly had the ability to, and they chose not to, and. Yeah, I think you're right. He's I'm not sure if he's the most overrated, but he is certainly up there because that for one thing the contract just doesn't lend itself to it and for another thing he's just so up and down as a player. Like his 2015 season is remarkable. It really is. It's such a thing of beauty. Um outside of that uh how do we want to measure greatness here? Uh, op- by OPS. Let's go any season OPS over 130. So his rookie year was 118. His sophomore year, 133. So that's one. 2014, 111. 2015, 198. So there's two. 2016, 114. 2017, 156. 2018, 133. 2019, 125. So he's always been at least 11% better than average. Um, but he only has like four seasons over 130 uh, with one season, his last season being dangerously close. But even even last season, the fact that he was a 125 OPS plus player, he did not feel like it. Mm-mm. I know that's a shit metric for reference. Mookie Betts um, has oh only two, se- three seasons over 130 OPS plus. Oh, oh, uh, well, he's been in the league a lot less, but still, I, I don't I don't. I wouldn't have given Bryce Harper that massive ass contract, but I don't give out contracts. So, <laughs> you know, what the fuck do I know? Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Bryce Harper is, you know, I'd say he's the most overrated. He's not a bad player. No, absolutely not. But he always ends up getting talked about like he's in that top tier or second top tier group of players that he just, I just haven't seen him be that kind of guy since 2015 i want to compare these two to giancarlo stanton for a second just because bryce harper only beat giancarlo stanton's free agent contract um or not free yeah it was a free agent contract or biggest no it was just largest contract in baseball so something like that giancarlo had a 13 year 325 million dollar contract bryce harper had a 13 year $326 
million dollar contract. So fucking petty. Giancarlo Stanton has been in the year, they've been in the league for 10 years. How many seasons do you think he was under a 130 OPS plus? Four. Two. Wow. Okay. His rookie year, where he had a 118, and 2016, where he had a 120. Those are the only two years he finished under a 130 OPS plus. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. Even, yeah. Even last year, with uh, this past year with the Yankees, where he only played 18 games because he was just ravished with injuries he still hit a 138 ops plus which obviously that would have you know been affected if he had played a full season because there's more room for that to fluctuate but what i'm saying is that the the, the talent even while spending the bulk of his season injured he, he still managed to in the short periods of time in which he was actually capable of physically capable of playing he still knocked the shit out of a ball yeah and honestly like people talk about him being like just crazy uh injury prone he, he granted this year he played in 18 games like you said was very hurt the past three seasons past two seasons he's played in at least 158 the season before that he played in 119 year before that 74 but he's played in at least 115 games all but two seasons if you don't include his rookie season which is you know kind of what you want i mean I guess uh, missing like 40 something games a year is not ideal, but it's not as crazy as people made it out to seem in my mind. Right. And I think he might be a better offensively. I think he's might be a better comp for, for what Mookie Betts will be looking at contract wise. Mookie Betts by far the better defender. Mm -hmm. um, Giancarlo Stanton in his career has 34.4 OR to 0 0.2 DWAR. Um, as much as we don't usually like going by defensive metrics, it's still good for the at-a-glance and Joe Carlos Stanton. Not great in that respect. Um, he's, he's Basically, he's fine. And I think even if you just looked at him playing, you'd go, oh, yeah, he's fine. Uh, whereas Mookie Betts is very good. So, again, if you told me that Mookie Betts is going to stay somewhere in that ballpark higher, if you told me he set the record, again, I wouldn't be surprised. But the contract Mike Trout got is so fucking insane. I just don't think he's going to get near it. I, I think he'll be at least $50 million shy of it. But, uh, wow, okay, that's not a word. Um, yeah, I, I would agree with that. So, I have that's one more query. I ran. Yep. Uh, real quick, if what is Mike Trout's contract? I just want to look it up because um, I want to. I I I keep I I typed in Trout into uh, Google just now and feel like an absolute idiot because that's a fish. It's not a man. <laughs> the fish um, man. He is the fish man, but he also is a person, and the fish is a different thing. So his uh, contract is twelve years for four hundred and twenty-six point five million dollars. So a hundred million dollars more than Bryce Bryce Harper. Oh. Yeah. So if Mookie Betts got fifty million dollars less than that, he'd still be getting a three hundred and seventy-six million dollar contract. And I am event I'm amending this. I'm saying he'll probably get seventy-five million dollars fewer than Mike Trout. Because four hundred and twenty-six million dollars is a comical amount of money that Mike Trout's literally the only person it's worth. But you also have to imagine or remember that it's for twelve years. He's only making thirty five and a half million a year. He's actually making thirty seven point one per year. Uh, Adjusted. Oh, yearly that's cash. Just... Oh, this is interesting. There's payroll salary. There's oh, that's adjusted including salary 2019. yearly cash. Yeah, I'm looking at spot track right now, and they included uh, so 2019 when it was uh, seventeen point six. So yeah, oh, thirty seven okay. million per year over the remainder of the contract uh, as the extension. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't think Mookie Betts is worth thirty-seven million per year. No, but I honestly see him getting something like thirty-five a year. Oh, I don't. No, absolutely not. I know I said ten-year, thirty-five million dollars, which is literally thirty-five a year, but I'm so, I'm so conflicted on it because, like Bryce Harper, he's only getting paid twenty-six million per year. Uh, let's see. Because yeah, is this a thirteen-year, making... a three hundred twenty-six million dollar contract? Yeah, so it's basically twenty-seven and a half. 
after uh, 2019 until um, 2029. But yeah, 27 and a half. Yeah, if so, if you if you throw th- of about three million per year on it and put Mookie at thirty per year, uh, for thirteen years, uh, it becomes three hundred ninety million dollars. I don't think he's worth that much. How is it much for for ten years? It'd be three hundred million. Ah, uh, it's tough to say. I, I don't. I just don't know. But he's definitely not sniffing four hundred million dollars. It's just not happening. So you, where would you compare him to Anthony Rendon? Ooh, oh, that's a great question. Is he a better player than Anthony Rendon? Um, I'll say, yeah, I think he is. Okay, he plays, a, Anth- he plays a less valuable position, but yeah, because Anthony Rendon is making thirty-five million dollars a year. Yes, but Anthony Rendon's also playing for a shorter contract. Uh, how long? He's is an eight. He's an eight-year deal. Uh, it's a seven year, two hundred and forty five million. Sorry, seven year. Yeah, which is fine. Well, that's what but I'm saying. Is time, I, so in order for yeah. in order for Mookie Betts to to get anywhere near Mike Trout money, he'll have to play for a long ass time, and that usually results in you yeah. getting less per year, a la Bryce Harper. If he wants to get the high AAV, a la Anthony Rendon, he'll have to play for. Anthony Rendon plays for six fewer years around his contract than Bryce Harper's. That's huge. Yeah, you're right. That's, that's why I'm. That's why Bryce. That's why Mike Trout's contract is fucking <laughs> ludicrous for anyone else to get. Uh, because if you tell me Mookie Betts is going to get thirty two and a half per year, okay, that contract's going to be between six and nine years. If you tell me he's going to be playing for a thirteen year long contract, his AAV is going to be like twenty eight, twenty nine. Like it's it's it's. The fact that Mike got both, I just called him Mike. We're good friends. <laughs> is it's insane. He's literally the only player that that's worth. I want to argue for Mookie Betts to make a shit ton of money, but you you win. You have convinced me that he will not get anywhere close to Mike Trout money. And it, it and it's just no knock on Mookie Betts. Like I really, I'm not trying to argue against Mookie Betts. It's just how. St- Stupid of a ball player, Mike Trout is. It's disgusting. It's fucking disgusting. Like legit, a hundred million dollars more than the next outfielder and the next contract in general. Yeah. Well, uh, Mike Trout, fish man, good at baseball. He is, which again <laughs> will be emphasized by this next query I ran, which I have here. Uh, I wanted to see, so Mookie Betts is uh, 27, as we mentioned, which apparently I knew because I ran this query with that intention. And I wanted to see which outfielders accumulated the most war in their career in their pre-age 27 season. Um, So Mookie Betts will not be in the top 10 on this uh, just because he broke in a little bit later than a lot of these other people, but still. um, So he's not going to be in the top 10. He is number 18 on this list with 42 war uh, below age 27 season. Uh, actually, this includes his age 27 season. I might rerun this because he's he's only played through his age 26 season. So let me let me adjust that just a little bit to be a little bit more fair to Mookie and see how that changes anything. And running. And waiting. <laughs> and looking, I bumped him up five spots. He's now number 13 on this list. So in the, the age 26 and younger seasons, number one player is, any guesses? Uh, Mike Trout. Yeah, Mike Trout. 64.2 war. That's so much. I know. Number two, Ty Cobb, 63.4. Number three, Mickey Mantle, 61.4. Number four, Mel Ott, 51.3. Then Ken Griffey Jr. at 50. Tris Speaker at 48.7. Hank Aaron at 46.6. Frank Robinson at 46.2. Al Kaline at 44.5. Ricky Henderson at 44.1. That's the top 10. And then after that, it's Joe DiMaggio at 42.6. Andrew Jones at 42.5. And then finally, Mookie Betts at 42.0, just ahead of Barry Bonds at 41.3. Yikes. 
uh, Barry Bonds accumulated a stupid amount of war in his elder seasons, um, which is why he's lower on this list than he would be if we expanded it. But Mookie Betts ahead of Barry Bonds, Willie Mays, Ted Williams, Shoeless Joe Jackson, quite a ways ahead of Bryce Harper. Um, <laughs> very good at baseball. Still 22 war fewer than Mike, Mike, Mike Trout, but... He's good, man. He's really good. Yeah. I hope he signs an extension just to play for the Angels until he's just like 65. Mike Trout? Yeah. I, oh, uh, you know what would be cool is if Mike Trout and Mookie Betts played on the same team. No one could afford that. I mean, they can't, but wouldn't that be really cool? That would be really cool. Just make a, uh, what is it? Make an all-star team. You could do that in uh, MLB The Show. If you had to put a third outfield to go with them, who would you put? Uh, I mean, it's pretty much whether you prefer Bellinger or Yelich. Or Judge. Uh, it's Not that he's as good as those other two guys, but he when he's healthy, yeah. he is very good. I'd, I'd go with Bellinger. I like Bellinger. I think I would go with Yelich just because I like Yelich more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like Bellinger more. That's why I went with him. Again, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't. It, it very, very much so doesn't. Uh, so I'm going to adjust all of these queries because we're going to talk about the next player that set a record in arbitration this year, and it is Cody Christian Yelich. What? Sorry, Cody Bellinger. I, God damn it. We're <laughs> <about the> <laughs> Laugh at my pain, folks. You, Laugh at my pain. You, you should have seen my face as I'm sitting here. And I genuinely was like, just I stopped what I was doing, turned towards the mic, and was like, the fuck are you talking about, Josh? What? Yeah, no, it's Cody Bellinger. <laughs> it's, it's Cody Bellinger. So he it's set so a record um, in arbitration this year for uh, the amount of money earned on your first ARB contract. Uh, he said it with uh, right around $11 million. I forget the exact number, assuming. Uh, I have it right here. It's 11.5. 11.5. Thank you. So in his, typically the way ARB works is you get more per year. Um, every ARB meeting, you know, you have more service time. So it goes along with that. Typically you get better because those are your um, earlier seasons going into your prime years. So you just slowly kind of build up. But regardless, um, uh, Chris, Cody Ballinger, who just won, I see, I was about to say Christian Yelich again, who just mm. won um, MVP this season, just set the record with the Dodgers, eleven point five million dollars. And so, if we look at our first query that I ran, best single season WAR amongst outfielders, I reset it to be age twenty three season or younger. Uh, where do you think Cody Ballinger's twenty nineteen season, as that is his best season, ranks on this list? Uh, pretty high top five. Actually, out of the top ten. No kidding. Not kidding. All right, number fourteen. Hear. What was his war? Nine. Uh, yeah. I mean, so he got beat it, by but... age twenty three season for Willie Mays, Ted Williams, Ted Williams age twenty two season. 23-year-old Ty Cobb, 20-year-old Mike Trout, 22 Bryce Harper, 22 Ty Cobb, 23 Mookie Betts, 23 Mickey Mantle, 23 Mike Trout, 22 Sam Musial, 23 Reggie Jackson, and 23 Shoeless Joe Jackson. Um, yeah. Yeah, you, you forget that those guys were really young and also really good. Yeah, that that's that's the thing you forget is like when you picture Willie Mays, like I don't know about or really any of the old dudes. I don't know about you, but I always pictured them in like their elder seasons because I think there's just more pictures of them there. Pictures get more and more common every year through early history. So you probably there probably are just more pictures of old Willie Mays than there are young Willie Mays. Like that's how I picture him. And you forget that he played baseball forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so. But still, though, to be in the top 15, which uh, number 15 is Mike Trout, because he's in every list you ever could possibly imagine <laughs> being in, um, that's, that, that's, that's a hell of an accomplishment. Yeah, uh, I'm in full agreement with that. So if we set in the next one, we set the starting year at 1960. So again, we have um, 
integration and we have uh, expansion. The best single season war for an outfielder age 23 or younger, Cody Bellinger, now in the top 10, just out of the top five, sitting at number six. Only behind age 20, Mike Trout, which leads this list at 10 and a half war. Just stupid. Um, <laughs> age 22, Bryce Harper with 10. Age 23, Mookie Betts with 9.7. Age 23, Mike Trout with 9.4. Age 23, Reggie Jackson with 9.2. And then there's Cody Ballinger sitting pretty at 20, uh, or at number six, tw- age 23 with nine war. Good for Cody. <laughs> uh, really good for Cody. Yeah. Uh, he's uh, he's he's pretty uh, pretty uh, pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. Um. So, where do you think he ranks for a uh, war accumulation? Uh, age twenty three season and under. Uh, I'd have to say outside the top ten, just because he's only had uh two major seasons. Like he's only been uh in the league for three seasons. He had two really good ones. One, you know, that was lacking. Believe it or not, um, and I would have agreed with what you just said too. Um, I'm looking at O War. No, actually, his War in 2017 and 2018 both 4.2. Okay, that's not bad. No, um, but like the way you framed it, which is one, um, one great year, and then one good one, and one so-so one, is exactly how I picture it, and that's right. not how it is. But anyway, sorry, continue. Um, I'd say at a, I'd say 14, let's just stick with 14. Yeah. So for some reason he is not on this list, which I don't understand because he is certainly under the age of 23 and played baseball in his professional career. So that's weird. But according to baseball reference, he has 17.4 war. And if I just put him in this list, I would put him tied with Jason Hayward and Sam Crawford, who each have 17.4 war. Uh, accumulated in their age 23 and under season. Um, Oh, you know what? He might have gotten stuck out because he played so much first base, and I set a minimum requirement for the outfield. Uh, That would make sense. Yeah, his primary positions played in 2017 and 2018 was first base. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I didn't even think about that. So anyway, he would be about there. Uh, Which rank was that? Somewhere between, depending on how they wanted to order this, because uh, anywhere between 20 and 22. Okay. Uh, Mookie Which, Betts sitting know, at 18. Bad. No, it's very respectable, given this is for all the baseball history. I didn't give a year cut off like I did with the other ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, some other familiar names. Bryce Harper at 21.5. Uh, sorry, in four, uh, ranked 14th of 21.5. War for his under age 23 season. Mike Trout, of course, leading this list with 37. Yeah, uh, Mike Trout, good at baseball every list he's on the top of every single list maybe that's why he got paid 400 million dollars can you imagine making 426 can you imagine knowing for a fact you will be getting paid at some point in your life uh, a a grand total of 426 million dollars and for mike trout that doesn't even count his sponsorship deals and all that shit you know uh, investment accounts and, and capital gains and all that knowing guaranteed he's going to receive payroll checks that total in $426 million before he turns 40. If someone, before he turns 45. Me, if someone handed me a check for $426, I would be thrilled, blown away. <laughs> if you added six zeros on the end of that, I genuinely like, I have a degree in finance. I don't know if I could fathom having that kind of money. Dude, it's so much. It's just so much. Like, he and can literally wipe his ass with $100 bills probably for the rest of his life. Okay, now I have to do the math on that. Um, how, how, many, how many wipes do you think it takes him to clean his ass? Or every um, shit. Um, per shit. Let's be conservative and say three. That's the exact number I was thinking of. All right. How many shits do you think it takes in a day? Uh, one. Really? Only one shit per day? Uh, I'm assuming that, you know, he has a lot of fiber and he's a big boy, so he can hold his shit and he just has one morning shit every day. Fiber makes you poop more. All right. Well, then fuck me twice a day. I don't give a shit. All right. We'll go with, we'll go with twice. We'll go with twice. 
Six hundred um, bucks a day. Six hundred bucks a day for, for three hundred sixty-five days a year. So that's two hundred nineteen thousand dollars per year. Um, so two hundred nineteen thousand. So he's making four hundred twenty-six million dollars divided by two hundred nineteen thousand oh dollars. So he could wipe his ass. <laughs> oh my god! For nineteen hundred years. <laughs> oh my god! So let's say. <laughs> um, uh Oh man. This is hurting me. How many shits could Mike Trout take per day to to squander his money? So Mike Trout, how how fast how fast do you want Mike Trout to run out of run out of hundred dollar bills? Let's say sixty years. That puts him at eighty eight. I feel like that's a good age for you to kick the bucket. All right, so sixty years. All right, that means he needs to burn seven point one million dollars per year in shits. And granted that it takes him um three hundred dollars per wipe <laughs> that means he could take twenty three thousand six hundred sixty six shits a year um at a hundred dollars per wipe for three wipes <laughs> to it would still take him sixty years to lose all his money oh my god this, dude like I get it like we talk about large sports contracts all the time and we don't blink at the numbers most of the time. <laughs> 26,000 shits wiping your ass with $100 bills for a single year? Fuck you, Mike Trout. You know what's funny? is like I genuinely thought it would be like a normal-ish. Uh, yeah. And the fact that it was 1,900 years of shits where you're wiping your ass with $100. All right, so you know what? I have to, I have to do more. Um, so so let's say let's Mike not Trout be conservative. You know? That's what I was about to do. So let's say he he wipes his ass. Uh, so we got hundred dollar bills. Eight eight wipes. Eight, it's a messy let's shit. Just, let's every just say time. ten. Because if you think about it, a dollar bill, you know, it's cotton, but it's not absorbent in any way. It's thin, so you can't really get a nice wide wipe. You know. <laughs> All right, I got ten in. Ten of shit. Let, let, let's keep the number of shits normal. We'll keep it at three this time, which is still, it's a healthy yeah. amount, you know? All right. All right. So that's $3,000 per day. So with times 365 or 365 days, so that's $1.095 million per year. Okay. 1.095, I'm saying it a bunch of times. So I can remember 1095. All right. 426 million divided by 1095 with the three zeros. That's still 389 years. If he has a wife and kid that he's convincing, he could have three kids and they're all doing it the same way. They're good until his death. So if he has three kids, that means that we have to divide this number by five mm -hmm. because I bet it's a five person family. Okay. That's 77.8 years per person. Fuck this, man. Fuck this <laughs> bullshit. That means that your, his three kids could all wipe their asses with 10 individual $100 bills for three shits per day until they are well after their retirement. And this is assuming that he keeps all of this money in like the bathroom cabinet, yes. not gaining any interest, no gains whatsoever. No sponsorship deals, no extra income, nothing. Fuck, dude. We should this is my favorite math that we've ever done. I agree. We should eat the rich. This oh, is ridiculous. Is That's so a confounding amount of dollars. I control myself. Like, this is just the most outrageously batshit crazy. I'm genuinely floored. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm genuinely floored by, <laughs> like, really putting into perspective how much money this all right, when we're done with this, can we tweet Mike Trout? Tweet Mike Trout this information. When this episode comes out, I 100% will. On Monday, this this is I'm going to bombard the world with ass wiping figures. Mike, I just want I just want a tweet back from you saying, "Yep, that's exactly what I plan on doing." I don't want <laughs> Mike a jersey. like what I'm doing it. I don't want an autograph. I don't want a video message for my birthday. I just want to tweet acknowledging that you will wipe your ass with a hundred dollar bill. You know those like posterity. 
those like gag toilet paper rolls that like are like all the individual pieces like look like hundred dollar bills. What was you it? ever seen one of those? No. Yeah, if you go on like you know like shitty gift websites, like like as, as in websites that give you intentionally shitty gifts, right. um, like that's a pretty common one. It'd be like toilet paper with like something on it. You know, get toilet mm. paper with um oh, a president's yeah, face on it. Yeah, yeah, so hundred Mike Trout could know. literally have that. <laughs> Can he contact the U.S. Treasury Department? What would you <laughs> even put like... that down as? Oh, sorry. I want uh, a do bundle I... of cash. I just don't want you to cut at the uh, the top and bottom seam. And just yeah, can you perforate it for me? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I just I'm... imagine Mike Trout with a solid gold set of scissors right next to his toilet paper roll in his bathroom so he could cut off exactly $1,000 bills from his roll of perfectly mint treasury bills. This is so not what I had intended on us talking about today, and it's my favorite thing we've talked oh, about today. Yes. Oh, just today? Possibly ever. This is like the highlight of this show. Oh, my God. I like I there's more things I had to say and I'm not sh I we're going to keep going but I almost don't want to. Like I almost want I, I kind of want this to be at the end. Right, um, like we have peaked. This oh is the God. peak of this episode. This if is the you last don't episode like of this. Numbers. Yeah, if you don't like this part of the episode, don't bother continuing to listen because it won't get better. No, it won't. Um <laughs> fuck. I guess we got to keep going. Yeah. Um let's talk about the Indians. Okay. Fr Francisco Lindor, he settled for seven seventeen point five million dollars for his uh his arbitration this season. What do you think about that? Um, I want to sign him to a Mike Trout deal, literally, so that he just never leaves the Indians. But I know that will never happen, so I'm fine settling with this. You know? Do you and think that this? I was going to say do you think this puts to rest the um trade rumors but at the same time they literally had to go to arbitration or settle on some figure yesterday so it's not like this really says anything since it was mandatory but right yeah i don't think this really says much that's um, such a shame if it happens it it's gonna happen at this point if they want to keep them they're gonna keep them i hope they do i don't know how this team could ever get back to contending without him I don't think the Dodgers, especially as you know, the front-running team, is going to be able to give up the prospects that would be needed to replace a guy like Francisco Lindor. So yeah, that that's that. Oh, uh, and uh, news of a much sadder ilk: uh, Chris Bryant is reportedly going to lose his um, service time manipulation lawsuit, which is bullshit. Which is yes, yeah, such incredible bullshit. And he he did get a nice contract for this year for in his uh, pre arb case or um, to avoid going to arbitration, eighteen point six million dollars, which is very nice. That's a colossal raise over what he was getting, which is good. Um, but at the same time, service time manipulation is prevalent. It has been acknowledged by players and even some front office members. And the fact that he lost his case is very saddening. It's not setting a very good precedent for how teams are going to use service time manipulation in the future, because now they know that they can get away with it. Yeah, and and they they now officially have. It's a fucking shame. Uh, yep. In general, uh. There uh, have been a total of 105 players that have avoided arbitration thus far, totaling in 109 years of contracts and $418.2 million, which is still $8 million fewer than Mike Trout's contract. <laughs> Think about that. 109 years for $418 million, and Mike Trout still makes more than that. In 12. So fucking uh, bananas. On yeah, average, the uh, B A N A N A S. Sorry. Thank you, Miss Aguilera. <laughs> um, on average, the ARB contracts were for 1.04 years, which should not be a surprise. The overwhelming number of contracts to avoid arbitration were one year. 
in that Barring list that uh, we've been going off of, I only saw two different players of the hundred and whatever that were over one year. One was for two years. One was for three. So well, who were the players? I forget who they were. Oh shit! Now I gotta go back and find it. One was Scott Oberg. Oh yeah, uh, relief pitcher for Colorado. He got two, right? Other he got three. He got three. Yeah. Uh, Jose Martinez for Tampa Bay got two. Ah, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, basically, we'll call it for all intents and purposes one year and uh, three point nine eight million dollars. So we'll just say four. So one year, four million dollars was the average um, arb or uh, arb avoidance contract i guess we could say sure uh, a, a lot of it gets brought down you might be saying like well you read so many high numbers why is that because those guys were all arb two if you were really good to arb four um which again would be your final year of arbitration so like jackie bradley jr who got 11 million dollars which is nice um because he's a really good defender and a shit batsman um <laughs> So $11 million is fair, but he's R4. That was his last year of arbitration before he heads into free agency. Whereas you have guys like Max Stassi of the Los Angeles Angels, who's in his R1 season and just got $800,000, which is fine. Like, that's still a raise. Like, he was making um, player minimum, which uh, for pre R players is like, I think, $670,000, some shit like that. So going from 670 up to 800, that's a $130,000 raise. Like that's a very nice size raise. Uh, we would all love to get that raise. You, it, putting it into normal people terms, like let's say you're making $67,000 a year and now you're making 80. You take that raise every time. Hell yeah. So yeah. So there's a lot of those where the players will feel, you know, decently good about it. Um, you know, Oliver Drake, who's a tam- relief pitcher for Tampa Bay. He got $1.025 million. Uh, in his arb one year so that 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 drags the the average number down a whole lot but in general still looking good hunter strickland i didn't realize he was still an arb player oh well yeah he seems old in my mind same thing with chris davinsky he's only in the second arb year jeez yeah. that's weird how much do you think tyler glass now got uh f- fucking not enough uh i don't know probably eight two point oh five Fucking A, dude. Ross Stripling got 2.1. Who do you think's better? Classed out by a lot. Yeah, that's weird, right? Uh, I'll say it. Uh, baseball owners are fucking criminals. I hate them. It's ridiculous how much they manipulate the uh, cost of labor in their industry. Uh, and it blows my mind. This episode brought to you by Karl Marx. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh Actually, I want to talk about the Yankees for a minute because I don't get it. What don't you get, my friend? Um, I get it to a degree, but it still just does not make sense to me. Uh, I want to talk about three specific players. Uh, you know what? Four, four specific players. All right. James Paxton, Brett Gardner, Aaron Judge, and Gary Sanchez. Okay. Uh, two of them signed. Well, three of them avoided arbitration. Uh, one of them just signed a, an extension. That was Brett Gardner. Uh, Brett Gardner signed a one-year deal for twelve and a half million dollars. Uh, Aaron With Judge a team option, I believe, uh, for a second year and ten million. Right, but I just want to focus on That's this fine. year yeah. for right now. Gotcha. Aaron Judge in his first year of arbitration signed a one-year deal for eight and a half million. James Paxton in his first or in his final year of arbitration signed a twelve and a half million dollar contract one year, and Gary Sanchez also in his first year of arbitration signed a one year five million dollar contract. Okay, now I get Brett Gardner is a veteran, and I get that James Paxton is in his final year of arbitration versus in his first. But I don't get how they could both get twelve and a half million dollars, while Aaron Judge gets eight and a half, and Gary Sanchez gets five. Uh, I don't know what there is to get. I mean, it's both their first years. Um, think about the fact that Cody Bellinger just set the record in first year arbitration, and would also be making less than Brett Gardner, or sorry, is also making less than Brett. 
Aaron judges 8.5 is a lot. And don't forget, like one of the things with arbitration, as I said earlier, is it does like you get more every year. And Aaron judge will like, like he could double his eight and a half next year. If he has a good season to get to, you know, the full, uh, would that be 17? Like he, he, if he has a good year, he totally could. He's that kind of player. Um, I just I don't know why arbitration deals are so repressed when clearly Aaron Judge is worth more than eight and a half million dollars to the New York Yankees. Oh, if you want me to defend this system, I will refuse. This is insane. This, yeah, this, this this was more of an attack against the arbitration system than it is yeah. the Yankees not giving Aaron Judge enough money. Which is its goal. Like its goal is to have um, is to suppress wages. It's to suppress labor costs, and it also can make players feel good about what they're getting, even though they're going to be getting significantly less than what they're worth. Because Aaron Judge gets to say he just got, I think the number was like a an eleven hundred percent raise. Like his his wage just increased well over tenfold because he was making, uh, I have it in front of me, six hundred eighty four thousand dollars last year, and now he's making eight point five million just this year so his his wage is going up a comical portion so he gets to walk away feeling good about it which he absolutely should He was making 8.5 million dollars this year that's great but relative to his worth he should probably be making a lot more than that yes but that's what arb is there for arb is there to hold it down and to give players a system where they can feel as though they are slowly getting what they're worth by getting these increasing numbers every year based on this debate system that they have to have, which is insanity. Uh, and teams going to feel good because even if they concede and give players what they want, they'll still come out ahead because it's still less than they're worth. Madness. Just a reminder, this is brought to you by Karl Marx. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. This is in direct opposition to the Ayn Rand podcast, which you can find <laughs> over at uh, ESPN. <laughs> Anything uh, else you really want to talk about today? Uh, do you want to discuss Alex Cora? Oh, yeah. So apparently, uh, word around the campfire in MLB circles is, is that in about two weeks' time, the MLB should be issuing its punishment against the Houston Astros, which does feel like a relatively quick turnaround, but who knows? Now, it was deemed that the Red Sox did cheat in a capacity uh, last year, the year that they won the World Series. Twenty, I guess 2018 is now almost it's two num- number years ago. And that means that Alex Cora was on the soon-to-be-penalized Houston Astros cheating team of 2017 and the soon-to-be-penalized Boston Red Sox team of 2018. Um, and that bodes really poorly for Alex Cora. Now, yeah. The Red Sox cheating thing is significantly, significantly, significantly less significant than the Astros. Um, it's still cheating. But if, if if you ask me, is this something that all teams at least tried to do at some point? I would say 100% yes. I wouldn't say that about the Astros. I would definitely say that about this. Um, they got caught having a camera in the outfield pointed at the catcher signs and then they would transmit that somehow i forget what the way was to the second if they had a guy on base they would get that information to the guy on base like what the signs were not it would not what the pitch was going to be just what the signs were Mm -hmm. and then the guy on second would just would then relay to the man batting what pitch was coming that is a very normal part of baseball that last part the guy on second cracking the sign code and telling the batter what was going to happen the cheating part is having a camera transmit that, uh, decipher that information uh, previously so that, that the guy on second knows what the signs are. Um, that's the cheating part. So if you're saying to yourself, oh, well, that's definitely bad, but not that bad. Yeah, it's definitely bad, but it's not that bad. And again, if you had asked me, were all teams doing this? I would be inclined to say they definitely, definitely tried, um, at least up until when the Red Sox got warned, hey, knock it out with the Apple watches. And the Red Sox said, no, fuck you, and kept going. In reality, they said, oh, we'll stop, and then didn't. So, 
if Alex Cora ends up being involved in two separate cheating scandals that happened in concurrent years when the MLB explicitly told him to stop it on both teams, this is not good for Alex Cora. Not good. Yeah, I, I do still think that there are going to be some lifetime bans handed out. Um, if this is true, I don't think there's any way Alex Cora can avoid it receiving one of those lifetime bans. I mean, it's insane how involved he was for two separate franchises in this. Yeah. Yeah, granted, still, the Astros cheating scandal is worse, uh, but the fact that he was a part of it, got told not to by MLB when he was a part of that, got told not to by the MLB when he was part of the Red Sox, it's the defiance of it. That's yeah. going to make the second one the big issue. It's that he was obviously he was knowingly doing it, but he was also lying about it and being mm -hmm. indignant about it. That's where the, the problem is going to really come into play here. Um, I agree. This I'm so excited. I'm so excited <laughs> to see how this concludes. It's going to be beautiful. Especially since uh, how much you do love the it's Red Sox. The Red Sox? Yeah. Oh. You love those Red Sox. Oh my God. I just want them to hurt. I want them to hurt so much. And the Astros at this point, fuck them to death. Send all of your good players to the Padres. Let's make the Padres the next superpower. Let's do it. Send, send them George Springer, Justin Verlander, Zach Greinke, Michael Brantley, Jose Altuve, Alex Bregman. Um, uh, Andrew Benintendi, I'm so sorry, Mookie Betts. It's okay, Chris Sale. Every who else is good on the Red Sox? JD Martinez. Send them all. Send them all to to the Padres, and let them let let the Padres be great again. <laughs> let the Padres be great again. I could get behind that one because you have to let them. They can't do it on their own. No, they. <laughs> we've tried to let them do it on their own. It has not worked. Four playoff appearances in fifty years. <laughs> The Marlins won two World Series in 20. <laughs> 25. And look still. where they are right now. Yeah, it's just crazy. Padres have been around for double the length of the Marlins. The Marlins. And the Marlins have two World Series wins. The Padres have one World Series appearance, and they got swept. Uh, yeah, that's not great. Uh, is there any other baseball topics you wanted to touch on before we... Depart. Skedaddle? No, I'm good, man. I'm good. Let's, uh, let's get on out of here. Uh, there is one thing I wanted to mention about football. Nothing in depth. Just um, the College Football National Championship is coming up on Monday. Oh. You will hear this uh, the morning of the National Championship Day. Uh, just an update for you uh, with Clemson and LSU's practice schedule. Due to inclement weather in the New Orleans area today, LSU will be practicing in the Saints indoor facility. Clemson uh, will now be practicing in a ballroom at their hotel. Yeah, I saw you sent me this. I, that's hilarious. That is so hilariously biased. It's unreal. Uh, as much as I want to see LSU win this game, the fact that one team gets a professional level indoor facility and the other gets a ballroom uh, is some major bullshit. And I would not be happy if I was a Clemson fan, player, or coach. Uh, and I would be raising some serious fucking hell. Because, my God. Yeah, I would be quite upset about this. <laughs> and if they lose, this would be like the story that's talked about. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hopefully, uh hopefully they don't because uh, no, hopefully they do, because that would be a fun fucking storyline for us do to do. Do you talk have about. a do you have a score prediction for that game for us? Uh I do. I think it's gonna be forty five to thirty five. What teams are getting those scores, buddy? Oh, LSU winning. LSU winning. Right on. Uh, go LSU. I'm hoping, I'm hoping for a high scoring national championship. I would too. Um, all right, let's, uh, let, let's wrap this up. All right.
All right. If you uh if you want to follow the show on Twitter, you can do so at juicing pod. If you want to hit us up via Gmail, you can do so at juicing the numbers at gmail.com. And uh until uh Thursday, y'all have a good one. It's not bye.